Hey, everybody, it's the Drive School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, and uh, my friend, Pastor Matt Richard, is back. How are you? I'm doing okay. Hanging in there. Uh, Been super busy. I mean, I I don't know. I always say busy, but I'm like, when am I never not busy? (laughs) It's just my personality. So um, doing well, though. Uh, It's supposed to be like 50 here in North Dakota. Uh, And the the warmth in the air, it's, I mean, it's February. I mean, it's just crazy. Usually it's like 20, 30 below. And so to have almost 50 degrees. It doesn't hurt to breathe outside, is it? It's just always a good day. Right, right. Right. (laughs) That's that's awesome. And the days are getting a little bit longer, too. Uh, It's one of those things, actually, I've always tracked, uh, since I've been a Christian anyway, uh, through the season of Lent, because you actually start to watch... uh, well, you start Lent usually in a place where you go to church when it's dark. And usually by the time Easter rolls around on those Wednesday nights, there's there's a little bit more daylight and it's, it's something to kind of look forward to. But we were talking about sort of before the, the podcast, just the Lent stuff. Um, so, so, Pastor, what does Jesus say about Lent, about going to church extra on Wednesday nights? What does Jesus say about all this stuff? Well, I would say right off the bat, uh, it's good. You know, it's good. Church is good. Uh, To be around the Word of God is good. To receive the Word is good. And so uh, I would say we don't look at Wednesdays as an extra service that we have to attend. Uh, No means it's an extra service we get to attend and and to hear about God's Word. And uh, the season of Lent kind of can come under bad wraps, I guess you would say, kind of like Advent. You know, we have this tendency in America to want to rush through uh, the season of Advent and Lent. Uh, I always jokingly say when we get to the season of Advent, we hear about wild man John the Baptist. And so everybody else is getting tinsel up and and uh, and, and Christmas lights and all that. Here we got John the Baptist knocking the Christmas tree over and, you know, setting the, uh, <laughs> send, send the presents on fire and telling us to repent. And I didn't realize that was the tree the axe was laid against the root of. Right, right. And then, and then, and then we get to the season of Lent. And, uh, you know, season Lent, it, it kind of fits the season. I mean, like, at least in North Dakota, it's kind of cold and dreary mm-hmm. and all that. And it kind of fits. It's just kind of this lull between Christmas and Easter. And so it kind of fits. But nonetheless, I mean, the whole purpose of, of Advent and Lent is, is really the theme of preparation. Mm-hmm. And so we have this, this theme of, of, of repentance, obviously, in, in the, those seasons. But it's also a season of preparation more than anything else. And as we are approaching uh, ever so slightly, uh, to Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. And so I would say that uh, to get to Easter Sunday, we got to go through Lent. And I would say, I would I would argue with anyone that if you don't observe Lent properly, then Easter kind of falls flat. It really does. It makes sense. I, I mean, it really does. It, it, it makes sense that um, the idea that, well, Jesus being alive is, is somehow less impressive if he wasn't crucified three days earlier. Right. Um, right. <laughs> Like, right. I'm, I'm alive right now too, but and and like I guess there's some miracle to that. But if if you all saw me die on the cross three days ago, that would be more of a shock. Yeah. Um, but but it's not even just that Christ is risen. But I, I think that the for you really actually matters here too. When we actually start to to apply Lenten practices, uh, it actually lets me see not just that Jesus died and rose, but but like why and 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 who it's for and and how it actually addresses me it, it's one of those those gifts that i find in in fasting because we are um not even a, today is is one week from ash wednesday and i've already failed at my fast and i've already realized like if i can't do these things as a sinner um lord have mercy it's it's dark yeah yeah I, and you know in a sense to you know we we would talk about Lent, I think it, it is also a time kind of think of a throttle, right? Or, a, you know, a mm. shifter, right? We shift in high gear in life. And, and Lent is kind of a time just to say, you know what, we're going to pull the throttle back a little bit. We're just going to pull it back a little bit. We're going to cut out uh, in the services on Sundays. We cut out some of our favorite parts. So the Alleluia's here at St. Paul's really cool. The Alleluia's, we have a box up front and the kids write the word Alleluia, the Sunday school kids. And then and then during, um, before Ash Wednesday, the Sunday before, they actually put all the Alleluia's in a box. We cover it with a big black cloth and it's by the, mm-hmm. uh, by the uh, pulpit. And so our Alleluia's are put away. And so we see this box. And I always announce the Alleluia's, the kids put the Alleluia's away. And so we strip things from our services and they're in that box until we let them out on Easter Sunday. And uh, so there's a stripping and, and, and a simplifying and a pulling the throttle back. All the way, at least here at St. Paul's, we get down to uh, Holy Thursday and we strip the altar. And then we yeah. get to Good Friday and it's like, it is just so it's bare. Big. And it's so bare, it's so empty. And then we don't have, uh, with, with Good Friday, we don't end with a benediction. We just leave it open. Everyone leaves in complete silence. And it's like, man, God is dead. You know, the crucified Jesus is dead 
for our sins. And then we come on Easter Sunday and all the leos, they're let out, right? And yeah. the music's back and he's risen. And it's such a huge contrast. But in a lot of ways, the, the liturgy itself is kind of bringing us through that whole story of, of what the disciples experienced, you know, yeah. everything that they went through as they descended towards Golgotha, right? And, and, and then to take the crucified one off the cross and put him in a tomb and all of that that goes with that and all the, you know, the fear and the, the confusion. And then all of a sudden, you know, he's gone. He's not in the tomb. I mean, mm-hmm. God be praised. And then the excitement that came with that, the joy that came with it, that he's actually risen. Wonderful. And and what's what's really kind of cool to me is that it's Lent and Christ is still risen from the dead during Lent. We're just we're talking about something else because it's important to sort of call attention to the things that we get used to. Um I, I it's it's so incredible to me just sort of how much human beings can just sort of become numb to. Uh the the kind of, of sin that we can just sort of let go because it's it's well, it's just every single day, the kind of suffering that we can actually get used to enduring. It's one of those things like everybody, we work uh, at Higher Things with kids. And one of the things I get from grownups uh, more often than uh, I, I'm super happy to hear is just sort of how easy they have it. Um, that the, the things that they're losing their minds over are just not that big a deal. But if, if that's the size of their world and that's what's wrong, that's why it's a big deal to them. And the, the reality here that might be worth talking about is just sort of how much suffering in your life as a grownup that you're used to that you just can't pay attention to anymore. Lent calls attention to it. It, it, it points out like there's a, a way that things are supposed to be. Look around. Are they actually that way or not? Are you actually clinging to God's law the way that you ought to be? Are, are you capable of, of saving yourself? Is your faith in a, in a place that is truly and genuinely focused on Christ and his gifts? Or has idolatry crept in? Yeah, and, and, yeah. And, Christ answers. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think I think I'm I'm always struck by the epistles. The Apostle Paul says this quite often. He says to be sober minded, and that idea of uh, that whole word of being sober is 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 quite quite profound. Now, obviously, we understand the word sober. I mean, we see it with the signs. It says, you know, don't drink and drive, stay sober, and all that. Sure, sure. But you know, if we just use that as almost like a metaphor. Uh, what happens when you consume too much alcohol, your, your senses become dull. Um, mm. You know, your, your vision becomes blurred. Your memory becomes lapsed. Uh, you slip into um, either sleepiness or euphoric state, and you're not in tune to your surroundings, which, you know, we can, you know, we can see a person that, uh, you know, uh, you know, be, be out and you see a person that maybe has had too much and you can kind of laugh because, you know, kind of chuckle because they're, they're not in connection to their surroundings. They're stumbling, they're falling, they're not enunciating and, and, and and they're just not in connection with reality. And so using that whole metaphor of that, when Paul says to be sober minded, it means to be living in the light, to be awake, to be alert, to be in tune with uh, reality. And, and Lent has a way, uh, I think that really, really Lent has a way of sobering us up, which I think sometimes that, that, that kind of stings because we would rather be in a drunken stupor, spiritually speaking, numb to mm-hmm. the realities of life, um, you know, uh, numbed to the reality of sin in our life. But again, that Lent season has a way of uh, jarring us, sobering us up, making us in tune to the reality. And when that happens, I would say that, that it can be painful, but it's not bad. I mean, it's not bad at all. It's actually good because when that happens, um, we have a solution, and that's Christ, uh, the cross that's approaching. And so we do not fear being sober-minded and looking into, or like like uh, the book of James, we're going to be covering James here at St. Paul's during the season of Lent midweek, looking into that mirror, uh, being, being uh, mm. confronted with the reality of who we are. And uh, that should not dishearten us because we have a Savior that actually does something about it. Right. So I, I like the the comparison to drunkenness that that Paul makes that 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 you're you're grabbing onto uh, because it also it points out um, the the peop- the reason that the drunkenness is warned against in the scriptures is because we use it to hide from the things that Christ would solve and, and the idea of of sort of sobering up the reason that people are, are are struggling with this so many alcoholics have other things that are wrong and, and the alcohol becomes the ball to their wounds. And the idea that, that we would be called to, to sober up, uh, it's, it's not a recognition, just sort of deal with your problems, but look at something that's actually going to deal with them for you. Because the reason that you're hiding in this stupor is, is because it hurts. It is because mm-hmm. there, there are some problems that you just don't know how to solve. And so you eventually just throw your hands up to it. Um, and here, 
Lent is not simply to leave you sad or brokenhearted, but it is to fix you, your eyes wholly and completely on, on the one thing that's actually going to save you, does save you, and it is Christ's suffering and death for you. Yeah, and I think you, I think you're spot on what you just said there, Harrison. You know, as far as Lent, if we only view Lent as a time to make us sad, we're not seeing it correctly. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, there can be a sadness to Lent as we are soberly confronted with the reality of our sin, the death, uh, our death, and the devil himself, uh, which does come through in the season of Lent. But if that's all we're left with is being sad, then we have forfeited and failed to hear the gospel. And the gospel is present in Lent alongside of that. We're never, we're never removed from the gospel as if we are gospel-less. You know, we mm-hmm. always have Christ, even through the midst of Lent. And so, I- again, it's not, it's not where we strip Jesus and put him in a box. It's, you know, like those alleluias we put away. You know, we put that away just so we can focus on a different aspect of things. But we don't put Jesus in a box and say, bye-bye, right. Jesus. We'll see, you. we'll see you in about five, six weeks. And then we'll just... By the time we get to Good Friday, we're we you know we're we're spiritually starved. We haven't had the gospel for five weeks. That's not what we're saying. Uh, Jesus is present in Lent for the forgiveness of our sins, and so it it's not an either or. It's it's a it's a more robust time of contemplating our sin, being sober minded, but also then hearing the gospel as we ever so closely approach even more each week uh, towards that Easter Sunday. Absolutely, uh, Pastor. Thanks so much. Yeah, it's good. Thanks, Harrison. Have a good one.